Obama. That day, 9-11 is still very fresh in the minds of people here in New York City and Washington and Shanksville, Pennsylvania, but there's evidence that it's receding in the memory of many, many Americans. What are one or two of the most important things that you do, you think should be done to keep this an enduring memory for America? Well, I think commemoration on days like today are very important. Um, and I must say that uh, both in Pennsylvania, and I understand in Washington, D.C., but I was in Pennsylvania earlier today, and the, and the ceremonies that went on today, I think, sort of to remind all Americans. Uh, but I think the best way to commemorate, and the way, best way to show our appreciation for and love and sympathy for their families, for those who are sacrificed, is to uh, serve our country. That's what this that's what this forum is all about, serving our country, and that way we can assure their families it'll never happen again. That way I think we can honor their service and their sacrifice to our nation and remarkable acts of courage and compassion and love. And uh, it's probably the best way to not only prevent a reoccurrence, but keep their memory alive by protecting the lives of those fellow citizens uh, who were unable to experience this firsthand, but are in danger. Senator, as recently as this past Sunday, you talked very openly about the fact that Americans should have been asked to do more than go shopping or traveling. What would you have done as president in those circumstances to make people aware of what they should do as Americans after 9-11? Well, first of all, I would have called them to serve. Um, I would have created organizations ranging from neighborhood block watch to making sure that our nuclear power plants are secure to uh, immediately proposing to Congress legislation such as Senator Evan Bayh and I uh, proposed a service to the country to create additional organizations to expand America, expand the Peace Corps, expand the military. Obviously, we were facing a new threat. Obviously, we needed to, at that time, take advantage of the unity in the United States of America. We weren't Republicans on September 11th. We weren't Democrats. We were Americans. And I think that if we had asked for a concrete plan of action, both on the part of federal, state, and local governments, as well as by the Congress of the United States, as well as, frankly, talking directly to the American people uh, and the need for us all to, to serve this nation. And I think perhaps we, but you know, I gotta tell you something, Rick. I, when I travel around this country, that spirit is still there in America. Today, we've seen Americans respond in a way that only Americans do, and I don't say that with any sense of superiority over any other group of people, but I do believe we're a unique nation and blessed with certain inalienable rights that we want to extend to the rest of the world. But I think that, that we, we probably still have that opportunity. And when I say this, I don't want to take it the wrong way, but Americans are so frustrated now with our government. 84% of the American people think the country's headed in the wrong direction. The approval rating is, of Congress is down to 9%, I believe, down to blood relatives and paid staffers. And, and this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to lead the nation and talk to the American people and reform our government and ask for more service. Well, Senator, do you, I mean, what are there, what are the obligations of citizenship other than paying taxes? And should there be, and do you see service connected to what you're talking about in Washington? And should there be something compulsory? No, I don't think so, Judy. I, I, I don't think, because I think when you compel someone to do something, then you basically are in contradiction to the fundamental principle of having people wanting to serve and willing and eager to serve. Americans are still eager to serve. Americans, when we look at uh, uh, all of the programs that we've made available, almost all of them, in fact, all of them are oversubscribed by people who are volunteering. Um, uh, what, what's the most, probably one of the lead organizations in America today is Teach for America. 
we're vastly thousands more seeking to be part of that program to go in the inner cities of America and teach children. Uh, we're doing well in our military recruitment. Could do better. We've got to do better on retention, but we have to expand the military. So I believe Americans at this point, if you're digging for the pony as I clearly am, uh, are ready now to be inspired. To ready, they're ready to go. They understand the challenges that we have in this world. They see the, the Russian invasion of a little country called Georgia. They see uh, the problems in Afghanistan growing larger. They see a whole lot of things happening in the world that's going to require us to serve, and that opportunity has to be provided to. I want to touch on something you said in an earlier answer, that Americans have a very low self-regard for Washington right now. How is it, though, that we can try to inspire people in public service and even go to Washington at the same time candidates are running against Washington and dissing Washington at every opportunity? We have to reform the way we do business. Look at Congress's activities since they came off their five-week vacation. They never miss a pay raise or vacation or recess. And the point is that they see this weird lock, they want it reformed and they want it changed and they're ready for change. And I think they're ready to turn the page the beginning of January. I think they are ready to say, okay. And one thing we politicians crave is, appro is approval. Um, and I think that if they saw us working together, the way that we did for a period of time after 9-11, look, we, we presided over the biggest reorganization of government since uh, the creation of the Defense Department, and the creation of the Department of Homeland Security. We did do a lot of things right after 9-11, but it gradually eroded, and now uh, I think the American people are ready, they're ready to rally behind, uh, uh, frankly, uh, a new